Hey guys, so I realise it's been about three months since I did a solely Harry Potter video on this channel and I got this book in today, so I thought I would do a little book review for you. So this book has been out since 2017, so I'm quite late to the party in getting it. Uh, to be honest with you, it just slipped under my radar, I didn't know it existed. So this is the unofficial guide to the collectibles of our favourite wizard, Harry Potter, by Eric Bradley. Now I do have two other unofficial guides, uh, two collectibles, and they're quite out of date now. This is 2017, so it's not, it's, it's kind of okay. I mean, obviously we're in 2021 now, and um, the only criticism I have as um, someone from England is that the prices are all listed in US dollars. However, I can't really complain at that. So I thought I would give you a quick review of this book. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So it covers books, rarities, movie memorabilia, values. It's got quite a lot. So this is the front cover, as you can see. I really, really like this. So it has the original Philosopher's Stone movie poster here, which is one of my favourite posters, actually. The Philosopher's Stone book, which I believe is trying to illustrate a first edition there. We have a golden snitch, a serious black lenticular poster, and a Hagrid's crossbow down there. Then if I turn to the spine, it just is just says that. I quite like the, the gold that they've used. I quite like the colour scheme of the entire book, actually. And then on the back, we have the chair, the famous chair, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, actually. There is a couple of bits in this book that I hadn't seen. So we have this arithmancy sign. Sorry, my camera's blurred there. We have this arithmancy sign, this life-size Dobby, and the Ford Anglia. So I'll lean in close here if you want to read that for yourself and pause the video. And if I just take you to the barcode, it says originally it was US $22.99 or Canadian dollars $28.99. I actually paid around £3 for this on eBay, so I definitely think I got a good deal. So without further ado, let's get on. So I quite like the uh, colour scheme, like I said, that they've used for this book. It's very vibrant. And then we have the copyright page, of course, and the acknowledgements page. I'm not going to obviously read everything to you. We'd be here for far too long. But uh, here we go. We have the introduction. And like I said, the only criticism I have, um, being someone from the UK, is that it is very US-based. However, um, the author is US-based, so I can't really complain about that too much. So we have some gorgeous illustrations in here. This is uh, one of my favourite quotes by J.K. Rowling. So chapter one is on books. So here we have a first printing, first edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Now, I don't have a first edition. They go for tremendous amounts of money. However, I do have an edition with this wizard on the back rather than uh, Dumbledore. And my edition also has uh, various errors, but it is not a first printing. I do, however, have a first printing of... I think Goblet of Fire, but definitely Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows, although it's a different uh, cover to this one. It's the uh, UK edition. I think there is also a UK edition. I'm not sure, but I'm talking about this cover that I have for Half-Blood Prince. So I do have a couple of first editions. They are the later books, though, so they don't really sell for, for tremendous amounts of money. But I don't buy to sell. I buy to keep, so... I'm not really so fussed about the value in that sense. Now, these are the American covers. As you can see, it's a Sorcerer's Stone. I don't think, I mean, I'm looking at my shelf now, I don't think I actually own any American editions of the books. I may own, I may own one, um, but looking now, I don't think I do actually own any American editions. So that's probably something I need to uh, work on. And we carry on. This is just about the printing errors in the first editions got some lovely uh, pictures here of different sets etc I find this kind of stuff really fascinating I love this artwork as well this is I think this was by Thomas Taylor right I do think that's Thomas Taylor's artwork and I just love it and then this uh, I don't know if you guys know about this I certainly do but I do not own it it's uh, the tales of Beedle the Bard written, handwritten by JK Rowling now, I know this is a highly sought-after piece for Harry Potter collectors. I don't think I'll ever own it, unfortunately, but it is a stunning book nonetheless. I do own, however, the auction catalogue for when this book was auctioned off. 
but it's not quite the same, is it? <laughs> so then I do obviously have this copy of The Tales of Beedle the Bard, not signed by J.K. Rowling, unfortunately, but I do own that copy. I think a lot of people do, actually. And then if we flick to the next page here, now these editions are editions that I don't have, but I would absolutely love to own them one day. And if you have a look at the front here, it's got Fantastic Beasts somewhere to find them, Quidditch Through the Ages, and I believe... I've just checked and for some reason I thought Tales of Beedle the Bard came in this edition, but they don't. It's just Fantastic Beasts and Quidditch Through the Ages. These two little books here were written and published uh, for Comic Relief, to support Comic Relief. I do own those. Now, I've never, like I said, I don't buy things to sell, but I've heard that these two books do have quite a high value now, quite a high price point, because they released later editions of them. But I don't actually know how much they're, they're worth, um, but like I said, I won't be selling them anyway. Moving on, so this is, of course, my favourite uh, edition of the books. Uh, this is the edition that I grew up with. These are the illustrations that I grew up with. This is definitely my favourite uh, of all of the book covers. And again, these are something that I've seen, but I've never owned. I believe, don't quote me, but I believe the Potter Collector owns a couple of these. I think, <laughs> don't quote me on that. But they're uh, uncorrected proof copies. Again, these are quite rare. These are very, very rare, and I don't think I will ever own one. But it's nice to see them anyway. We've got some notes by J.K. Rowling and a J.K. Rowling autograph here. Now, if you've um, been on my channel for a long time, you know that I do actually own this. Uh, I'm not going to show you right now, but I can see it. I'm looking at it. Uh, I do own this, and it's my only authentic J.K. Rowling autograph. I got that quite a while ago, actually. I want to say... 2014, 2015, something like that. And again, I don't personally know the price point of this autograph. Here, I, I looked at this and nearly died, $19,120. That's not just for that. That was for a um, rare first edition book as well as that. So <laughs> that, that that scared me a little bit at first. Um, I don't actually know how much that is worth on its own, uh, the one I own. Uh, but again, I'm not going to be selling it. So there's that. So again, we've got a book here signed by quite a few of the cast. I do have a couple of signed books, but they don't have that many signatures in them. So as you can see, I'm flicking through quite quickly, but this whole section is on the books. Next up, we have movie posters. Now, I do own a few replica movie posters, as I'm sure every, a lot of you guys do. Um, but I own one original movie poster, and that is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. I got that from my local cinema. And again, in terms of price point, I just don't know, but I won't be selling it. So this is telling you the values if you had the original movie poster, not the replica posters. And again, these can be quite rare now, but they're not the rarest of uh, Harry Potter merchandise. Then we have the giant size movie posters, which is what I have, uh, again, for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, which I don't think they show in this book. And I'm looking at that now, this poster I do have, but it is a replica that I bought at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. It's not originally from the cinema. Now, these I do own, though. This is one poster, but it's a lenticular movie poster that is Voldemort and Harry when it moves. I do own that. It's only a mini poster. But I've never actually seen the Sirius Black one before, so that's something I'm definitely going to be looking into. Then there's the foreign language posters, and these I adore. So these are movie lobby cards, and I don't own any of these. But they're always things that I want to get signed when I'm looking at movies or TV shows. If you see at the bottom, it's got the oh sorry, it's got the name of the film and then some press information. I have a couple of these signed. Um, I have some Gotham ones signed. I call them promo pieces. I have some Gotham ones signed. Um, I do have a couple of other promo cards like it, but I don't own any Harry Potter ones. They call them lobby cards. I don't know if we call them that in the UK, but I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to be on the hunt for these because I knew they existed. I've just never owned one. But yeah, I just think they're, they're amazing. And imagine them signed. Oh. Then we're on to the next section, which is movie props. Now, as you guys might know, I only technically own one Harry Potter movie prop, and it is a orange from the Great Hall set. It is a prop orange. <laughs> I also own some snow in a little jar that was from the Hogsmeade set, but I don't own anything 
you know, majorly uh, expensive or rare when it comes to Harry Potter movie props, simply because Harry Potter movie props are so rare. So you see these pop up on eBay from time to time. Now, just to um, just to reiterate what I mean by movie props, I mean props that were on the set of the movie or there's other things like um, costumes, you know, basically anything that was screen used is a prop. Uh, I'm not talking about prop replicas like the Noble Collection creates. I'm talking about things that were actually used in the movie. And I only own one, technically two about that but I do actually own a prop card um so I so prop cards were there was an item I think mine is a sleeping bag which was cut up and then put into a card so you are still owning a piece of a prop but it's not a full prop they've been they've been destroyed not really destroyed but you know what I mean to make a, a card I don't know if I'm describing this very well but anyway we'll we'll move on but yeah I don't own that many now you see these um acceptance letters crop up on eBay from time to time. You also tend to see the pieces of the um, Devil's Snare crop up from time to time, but I always worry about buying authentic movie props online because you just don't know. These are so easily replicated that it's really difficult. Again, we have some official costumes here. Now, this one was sold at auction, as you can see there. It's uh, They don't know who wore it. A student wore it on the films, but they don't know who it was. And these were not, these have never been sold. These are just pictures from um, exhibitions, etc. So there's a lot of stuff here that, like I say, will probably never be sold. It might be in the future, but um, these glasses were. A golden snitch has never been on the market. This has gone up for auction, as has this, and it's a crossbow as well. And we have the chocolate frog card and the broomstick that Harry, uh, that Daniel Radcliffe, sorry, uses on the Vanity Fair cover. That's, I've never seen up close pictures of that. So that's quite interesting. Just going to flick through. Now the golden egg, again, the official original prop has never been up for sale. Um, although there is a, uh, although there is one in the one about the studio tart. Sorry, I can't get my words out. Um, However, I do own the Noble Collection replica of that. Now, this fact I thought was amazing. So this is the Ford Anglia. And if you read there, and I never knew this, I can't believe I never knew this, the Ford Anglia is owned by Nigel Grint, who is Rupert Grint's father, who plays Ron Weasley. I just think that's amazing. I'd never heard that fact before. And then we move on, just showing you again some props. Now, this is incredible. And this book is also the first time I've heard the word Harry Pottery. Apparently, that's who I am. Someone who collects Harry Potter memorabilia is called Harry Pottery. I don't know. Now, I remember posting about this. I remember all the hype when this chair went up for auction. So if I may, I'd like to read you a little bit about it because I was, oh, I remember when this happened and I just wished I had the money for it. So it says, when I first learnt we were auctioning the chair J.K. Rowling herself used to write the first parts of her epic Harry Potter series, my jaw dropped. I immediately made plans to visit the chair in our cataloguing area where researchers pour over thousands of rare pieces of historical artefacts, collectibles and rare books all day long. So this guy actually saw the chair. The chair was packaged carefully inside of a large wooden ship shipping crate with the word England stamped on it. It was like a piece of Hogwarts had been delivered to the halls of heritage auctions. We had sold lots of autographs and ins autographed and inscribed books by Rowling, but nothing like this. This was the kind of item for which collectors spend their whole lives looking, like Albert Einstein's wristwatch or Abraham Lincoln's inkwell. But to collectors, Rowling's chair represents the throne of the entire Harry Potter universe, and it was decorated by the creator herself. I was thrilled to be in the same room when the chair sold in April 2016 for a spellbinding $394,000, fully eight times its opening bid. Little did our auction staff realise it would become the most valuable piece of Harry Pottery ever sold. I just think that's incredible and I do remember this selling, I remember the, the hype around this chair going online. So here we have a bit more about the word Harry Pottery, which I'm so surprised I'd never heard before. 
It says, what's Harry Potter, you might ask? We call it the hobby of collecting items relating to the Harry Potter books, films and fandom. There are a lot of Harry Potter items that have been made in the 20 years since the first Harry Potter book was published, and this is the world of Harry Potter. From the books to holiday ornaments to rare movie props, all of it belongs in the world of Harry Potter. The phrase Harry Potter was coined by Heritage Auctions co-founder Jim Halperin, I hope I've said that right, when the chair sold for such an astonishing amount to an anonymous bidder. It wasn't me. <laughs> I was quite surprised J.K. Rowling would sell the chair, said Gerald Gray, the former owner and the CEO of Auto Control USA Incorporated. She originally sold it for a children's charity. Gray donated 10% of the hammer price achieved to Lumos, Rowling's charity for children. So, yeah, I, I, I'm so surprised I'd never heard the word Harry Potter before, because that technically applies to me. But yeah, I'm sorry to talk about this chair, but it was very, very interesting stuff, and I wish I could have owned it. And there's more pictures of it and more information about it. Um, I'm not going to read you too much more but it's incredible. We also have this bracelet that J.K. Rowling designed in 2013. Uh, she auctioned it off for Lumos, her charity. Again, I remember when that went up as well, and I just, I knew I wouldn't, I didn't even bother bidding on it because I knew I would never win it. So then we have a couple of kits here and things like that. Harry Potter art. So this is the eight most valuable pieces of art. So Thomas Taylor's image. We have this one, which was uh, drawn by J.K. Rowling herself. The Ford Anglia, which was drawn by Cliff Wright. Thomas Taylor's Dumbledore art. The Cliff Wright's cover art for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Mary Grand Prix time artwork. I love Mary Grand Prix's work. We have Tommy Lee Edwards' sorting hat picture there. Tom Richard, uh, Richmond's, sorry, Tom Richmond's mad illustration. And then on to rare promotional items. So I do have a couple of promo items. I've... Uh, a few they're not specifically book or movie related some of them some of them are to do with the video games but I do have quite a few promotional items in my collection I don't have this life-size Dobby however so this was a uh, press kit of uh, Bloomsbury um, it was a Half-Blood Prince advertisement for a midnight release party this is what you got I have the poster for it and I have the Bertie Bots Every Flavour Beans I believe but I don't have anything else from that press kit then autographs, of course. Of course, we now have got quite a few autographs. And here we have a call sheet. I do own a couple of Harry Potter call sheets as well as other fandoms. Uh, this was, uh, I didn't, I'd never seen this before. This was a set that Matthew Lewis put out uh, and it sold for $687, which I think is quite cheap, actually. It's a call sheet, a uh, cardigan. Is it a cardigan? Let me just check. So it's a grey fleece hoodie stitched with Chamber of Secrets uh, on the front, Harry Potter cast and crew on the left arm from 2002. Um, it's a white cotton long sleeve t-shirt with the Harry Potter logo on the front and Chamber of Secrets crew 2002 on the back. Um, a scarf, a Gryffindor scarf with a patch reading Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, Matthew Lewis signed all of the items as well. A pass for the London world premiere of the Philosopher's Stone. I'm not there there is. Um, again, signed by Matthew Lewis. A pass for the dinner at the Savoy. An authentic autograph card. A call sheet, a ticket and a guest pass for um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So I had no idea that that set was uh, being sold, had ever been sold, this Matthew Lewis set. But I just think that's quite a cheap price, actually, for all that. But again, it's lovely to see them all pictured here because I didn't, I had no idea that had been sold. And there's a bit more. We've got, a, you know, a crew scarf, a crew hoodie, a crew hat, a different crew hats. And here we have uh, press kits, which I do love. I do love press kits. Then Harry Potter merchandise. So I do own that Voldemort in the back there. So this talks about the rare uh, original Lego sets, the Noble Collection chess set, Dumbledore's wand. We have the glasses. We have a remote control wand. Funko Pops, as you know, I do collect uh, Harry Potter Funko Pops as well as other Funko Pops, so I do have quite a lot of those. Lots of things here. I do own that. That's actually one of the most reviewed, um, uh, viewed reviews, I couldn't say that, viewed reviews on my channel. I also own that Monster Book of Monsters. The sorting hat I own again. I don't own this Dobby. I really want him though. <laughs> we have the sweets. There's lots of things here, lots of memorabilia that you've probably seen before. 
Now, this pin I had never actually seen. Uh, I love it, this Weasley Wizard Weezers pin. So I'm going to have a little look around for that because I love that pin. <laughs> the Golden Egg, uh, obviously I do own that from the Noble Collection. I think I've had a, done a review of that on the channel before. Lots and lots of things here, as you can see. Now, the Pez sets I don't own still because they're so hard to get here in the UK. They were only released in America. And we do also have the plates, the um, Royal Dalton plates. I do have a few of those as well. The Wizards collection. I can't believe I can tell you that I own this now. I never thought I'd be able to own the Wizards collection, but I do. And oh, I'm just so grateful for that. But then, yeah, like I say, lots of other stuff in here that I've never... Uh, I either don't own or I've never seen before and a lot of it I'll never own <laughs> this is about a Harry Potter wedding which is just incredible and then a bit about the fandom which is great because I love to read people's stories um, you know how Harry Potter inspired them and things like that now this is more about um, independent sellers so this Grim Cup on Etsy which uh, my friend Katie got for me the music box I do also own I'm surprised, though, I'll be honest, that there is a section on independent sellers. I mean, it is an unofficial book, so I guess they can get away with it. But I know Warner Brothers tend to have a problem sometimes with independent sellers. So I'm quite surprised that they did a little section like that. But I'm happy with it. And then, of course, we have the index. Which is there. And the back of the book, a little bit about the author. And there we go. So that's the entire book. And this review is way longer than I thought it would be, um, just for a little book. But, you know, I like to talk on and interject my thoughts here and there. But, yeah, I think all overall this is a great item to have if you're a Harry Potter fan. Very affordable. Like I said, I think mine was £3 on eBay. So if you want one, go and check eBay or Amazon. That's probably your best bet. And yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy to own it. Just a, an extra little Harry Potter book for my collection. And I saw some things that I didn't know existed. Um, the fact about Rupert Grint's dad owning the Ford Anglia, I just think that's incredible. Something that completely slipped by me. I don't know how I didn't know that. But yeah, that's the review of the book with my babbling on. So thank you very much if you've stuck it out this far. I really hope you enjoyed the book. I hope you enjoyed the little bits I had to interject. And I will see you all soon. Bye bye.